Good. Yeah, she's happy. Good. Oh. You don't often smile like that when we're doing media snack. You're normally rolling your eyes at us. That doesn't add nothing. Coming up, media strategy is more important than media buying. Hello and welcome to ID.com's Media Snack, episode 82. Uh, so we are continuing kind of marking the one year anniversary of the ANA's media uh, transparency report. Uh, this week we're going to be looking at media thinking and how we think that's becoming more important than media buying. That's right, we're going to cover a report that's come out that looks at the importance of media auditing. Yep, uh, and we're heading off to Cannes next week so we'll have a little chat about that. Uh, all coming up in Media Snack in just the time it takes to eat a sandwich. Okay, so if you've been following uh, episodes in recent weeks, we've okay. been in different places yep. uh, a lot of the time, so it's nice to be back in a very sunny London today. Um, we've been talking uh, and marking the, the one year anniversary of the ANA's Media Transparency Report, and we've been looking into seven areas where we think there's been significant change yep. and will continue to be changed uh, in the time ahead in the media industry. This week we're talking about media thinking, and by that we just mean advertisers taking a slightly more strategic approach to kind of managing media yeah. and working with agencies and buying media. Um, I think one of, the, one of the biggest significant shifts that we've seen, which I think we can credit somewhat the ANA uh, for driving, is advertisers taking media more seriously, which yeah. we've acknowledged, um, and also just the behaviours around things like setting proper KPIs for media and being able to brief yeah. agencies properly and evaluate work properly suggest to us that there's you know a, a, a readdressing of that balance yeah. between planning and buying that's right and and I think um, and it's the balancing thing that I think has has been the most obvious change in the last 18 months yeah. certainly is you know advertisers are taking greater consideration on the strategic thinking that goes into a media plan so yeah. that they can then you know validate and have a point of view on the plan that is then going to be bought yeah. and so the diligence that goes into perhaps the writing of the brief the consideration on whether those strategies that are coming out of the agencies are appropriate to their requirements yeah. I think has, has been the bigger change and I, you know the agencies embrace that you know they want to see their planning and their thinking being valued on the client yeah. side so that's a, that's a really positive yeah. um, and, and then we're seeing it in practice so with a number of advertisers you know, we've talked to a little bit before about this fragmentation of scope when it comes to media. Yeah. Um, so as advertisers perhaps start to start to see the value of strategy now, and what we're talking about is you know effectiveness of media, yeah. not driving a cost efficiency of media. So this is a this is a race to the top, yeah. which is one of our favourite phrases: race to the top, not race to the bottom on media. Um, so what we're seeing is advertisers considering fragmentation of scope, and that's not because of the report, that's not necessarily because of you know, concerns around media agencies as they are, but the idea that maybe strategy and planning should be separate from the execution. Yeah, um, or at the very yeah. least, you should be choosing partners that provide strategy, analytics, and yeah. data, uh, based on their capabilities in that, exactly. and that that shouldn't be compromised uh, in the excuse, if you like, of finding a partner that can buy really yeah. cheap media. So this can be the same agency, but we just need really clear delineation of scope. That's the, that's the idea, and also for advertisers to be prepared to pay for strategic thinking. Yeah, that's that's right. the most important thing Absolutely. because agencies have struggled, I think, historically to to charge for you know planning work. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, certainly the clients that we're working with, um, and we're strong advocates, you know, pay for planning services in some form. You know, it, even within your existing agency, just delineate that as, as, a, as a piece of scope. Um, and then we're finding, at, perhaps on the more progressive end, some advertisers wanting to take a bit more control yes. of their data and analytics um, and that starts to very, really empower them yeah. a lot in, when it comes to the eventual media buying, right? That's right. And, and, and I think that's the battleground, right? It's, yeah. it's uh, you know, clients beginning to realise that if they are the smartest 
uh, stakeholder within the supply chain. Yeah. And they can truly understand the value of their media investment as yeah. opposed to just the price of it. Yeah. Then that allows them to be more informed and more strategic in the way that they go to market. Yeah. And so, and that's all about data, right? Yeah. That's all about understanding how to use the data, how to use attribution modeling, uh, the, the, the technologies that are out there to enable them to be as smart as they possibly can be yeah. on how to invest that media. Yeah, and that, that, that's hugely exciting. And we've, we've observed um, you know, a few examples now of where the advertiser is smarter than anyone else in the supply chain. It's really smarter than the, any of the agency or any of the vendors or anybody else, any technology platforms, whatever. Um, being empowered with that with that information and that is going to be the catalyst so when we say you know strategy is more important than buying it's on the basis of that shift now which is empowered marketers with data and insight about what drives outcomes in their business yeah. and therefore what to plan yeah. and what to buy so and that's when the you know the differentiator or the competitive advantage in media is not the price you pay mm -hmm but it's the insight that you have and the choices that you can make. Absolutely, and, yeah. and yeah, you know, we, we talk about some advertisers that are bringing that capability in-house and that are yeah. championing that as a role internally. But uh, you know, we're, we're within the pitch market, we're quite busy, and without exception, the, the, the key strategic requirements of the agencies that are participating in the reviews that we're managing mm. is all about how to use data to inform really smart strategic thinking. Yeah. So a lot of clients are relying on their agency partners to do that for them. But you know, it's all about data-driven, smart strategic thinking. Yeah. Um, and, um, and that's most definitely the future. Yeah. So uh, I suppose the, the advice here is you know, take, start taking strategy seriously if you haven't already. Um, because that's the battleground, so you, and it takes a lot of preparation. You've got there's a lot of things you need to put in place to kind of gather that. Because gathering just the data and the ability mm -hmm. to create analytics and insight from that, and then make informed decisions, um, is really empowering. But this is something which, which we're observing, and it's going to really we'll see in the next 12 months anyway. That's yeah. our prediction. We're going to see the real shift between a focus on from buying media to the strategy uh, and decision making. So next up, we're going to cover a report that's come out of a trade body called IARCA, which is the European Association of Communications Agencies. They conducted a six-month report on auditing within media. So they interviewed agencies, advertisers, and the auditing community. Yeah, and, and us. And us, yeah. um, under the context of trust. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, and the findings are actually really positive and constructive. Yeah. Um, uh, all parties believe that auditing is an important part of working within this industry. Uh, the separation of compliance auditing and media kind of pricing, benchmarking auditing uh, was was acknowledged. Um, and I think in a at a time where you know data is so kind of prevalent and rich and and so sensitive, there were certain rules that I think that came out that can only help the the community move forward. Yeah. Uh, that was you know NDAs needed to be tighter. Yeah. Uh, there was an issue around conflict of interest, so the auditing community had to be completely transparent in the services that they provided, yeah. so that the agencies felt comfortable that there was no issues in the recommendations yeah. that they were given. Uh, and, and finally, the, 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 the report suggested that um, the auditors themselves needed to be kind of qualified and credited to yeah. provide the level of experience and expertise that yeah. would kind of warrant their kind of involvement in it. Yeah. So generally a really positive, constructive piece of work that yeah. will hopefully kind of move both, or move all the parties Yeah, on. It was good, that's a very good summary. Thank you. Um, you know, it, it was, it's a really good, it's good to see kind of the voice of agencies coming together through a trade body, because we don't get to see that very often. They don't kind of talk as one collectively. Yeah. So Iaki have done a great job in kind of gathering, mm -hmm. gathering that sentiment. Um, and I think the, the ambition here is to bridge a little bit of the gap. Yeah. Um, you know, there's been historically a bit of tension between agency groups and the, particularly the audit community, which yeah. last year ended up in, in court um, in certain places. And, you know, th this is, the agencies having their say and a point of view, rightly so, on you know any other advisors to to advertisers, yeah. including us. Um, 
you know, and I think setting setting high standards of integrity and transparency mm -hmm. and you know data compliance and all these kind of things, and you know avoiding conflicts of interest, absolutely required one hundred percent. So to us, you know, it feels like a charter of common sense. Yes. I mean, it, it, there's nothing in the report. You should read the report, but there's nothing in the report where you go, oh, okay, well, that's, you know, that's controversial. Mm -hmm. Every single thing in it is just common sense approach, yeah, uh, and it's as an advertiser would make sense it's what what you would want um, you know you want transparency and integrity from everybody in the supply chain yeah you know from kind of top to bottom so uh, we very much welcome that um, you know and I think it's good it's a it's a good sign good positive uh, you know sign that this is like the you know the the, the different parts of the industry yeah. kind of coming together I think That's to right. find a bit more consensus which is helpful really positive really constructive and there should be no reason why any of the parties would, would challenge any of the, the kind of codes of conduct that yeah. were suggested in the report. Good. And that leads us quite nicely, actually, onto just something else we wanted to touch on, which was uh, inspired a little bit by a, a piece which we'll link to, highly recommend that you read, uh, written by a guy called Dan Gilbert, who, who runs an agency called Brain Labs, who, who wrote a great piece in The Drum, I think, this week, um, you know, uh, explaining how t TV buying will become programmatic. And he's yeah. kind of broken it down really helpfully into some con con kind of component parts, uh, which we won't do it justice. So it's best to read his perspective. But thinking about what we were thinking about is the impact that that then has on the media audit, right? right. Because the traditional media audit has been so TV centric. Mm. What happens to the media audit when you're buying TV in, in real time on an, in an auction because then there's suddenly there is no pool. You don't need a pool. Yeah. You don't need an audit. Yeah, well, because there's nothing to audit, right? Yeah. The, 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 the price of your media is dictated by market forces, yeah. as simple as that. And, so, and I think that's, that's an enormous uh, challenge for the media auditing community mm. because they're going to have to innovate. There will come a time very soon where uh, the majority of media inventory is bought programmatically. Yeah. Whether that's, you know, it, it's currently happening in its nascent form in TV, yeah. uh, but the outdoor is bought programmatically, obviously digitally you can buy programmatically. There will come a stage where you get critical mass. Yeah. And then the role of the traditional audit, where you benchmark one advertiser's price versus another yeah. and sell them that... Based on like last quarter or last exactly. year. Exactly, it makes no sense at all. Yeah. So, you know, it's... it's uh, it, the auditing community are going to have to innovate in order to uh, continue to operate within a within a dynamic and massively changing marketplace. Yeah. And we've got some thoughts on that, which we may or may not decide to share on Media Snack in the future. But look out for that. Um, but that's good. So um, read Dan's piece. I think it gives you a really good perspective on on how the TV market is going to change, um, and it starts to put everything else into context, which is really helpful. Um, so finally to say, so we are next week in Cannes, it's the annual nonsense uh, of Cannes, so we, we go somewhat reluctantly, but you know, packing a sun cream. Uh, uh, and I think the, the, the idea of media thinking, I think, is something that which is hopefully going to carry over into next week. Mm -hmm. You know, we love the idea of you know, this higher purpose and higher, uh, you know, bigger strategies around media rather than media buying. I think we're seeing the changing shape of CAN. There's been a lot of reporting, uh, positive and negative, about how, how CAN is changing. But one thing is clear is there is there's less tech, there's less buying stuff going mm -hmm. on, and a bit more strategic stuff. I mean, in, and by that we just mean, you know, you know, more consultancies are going to be much more visible in CAN this year uh, than ever before. Um, and I think that signifies perhaps a shift slightly more up the chain, slightly more focused on you know, effectiveness. Let's hope. Very we'll good. see. Anyway, uh, we'll be reporting back, no doubt. But that's all for this week. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now. Have a good weekend. <laughs>